As designers working with UI design software, we enjoy the freedom to move our elements freely creating our designs. Web design, especially when working in the browser or with HTML, is different. Usually elements stack one after the other per default. To manage how elements look and behave, we can use CSS. And this is where Flexbox, a powerful CSS layout tool, comes into play. It simplifies the process of arranging and aligning elements in a container and helps to control the layout's response to changing sizes. And if you're a designer that tried to apply auto layout in Figma and this happened, then it's probably because you didn't understand Flexbox. Flexbox can be used to set up individual components as well as overall layouts. So let's start from the beginning. Flexbox consists of two key parts, the flex container and the flex items. The flex container is the parent element that holds the flex items, its direct children. The flex container sets the overall layout rules, known as the container properties. We can decide on a general alignment, add some padding to our container, decide on the gap between the items, and also choose the alignment of the items within the container. This could be at the start, end, center, top, bottom, or distributed evenly within the available space. The flex children or flex items also have their own flex properties that gives us a certain amount of freedom, defining how each item will adapt to the available space in relation to its siblings. But let's go step by step and understand the basic CSS setup of Flexbox. So here are our items in HTML and they sit inside this container. So in CSS, there's some more styling, don't worry about that. In the container class, we simply add display and flex, and that turns it into a Flexbox container. And you can see now our items align horizontally. If we want to change the direction, we add flex direction and column. But let's comment this out for now. I can now add some padding. If I just had one value that's applied to all four sides the same, and I could add a gap in between my items. With justify content, we can now align them, so to the end or to the center, and with align items, we can align them along the other axes. To distribute the available space, we can use something like space around or space between. And the great thing is that if we resize now, it keeps on adjusting to whatever space we have available. So space between can also be really useful for something like a navigation, because we can stick the items to opposite sides. It's not the only way to achieve this, but it's one of them. Now that we understand the basics of Flexbox, how does that translate to Figma? Well, actually quite well. Auto layout in Figma essentially is Flexbox, with a few exceptions. Our Flex container in Figma is simply a frame turned into an auto layout frame. The auto layout menu holds all our container properties, changing direction, adding gap, adding padding to the container, changing the alignment, and if we double click, we can change to space between and now have an equal distribution. If you jump over to dev mode, then you can actually see the direct translation into Flexbox happening. Let's learn a little more about the real thing. Another great thing in Flexbox is that we can set the flex container to wrap. Meaning if the items exceed the container's width, they will move to a new line. Let's change the content a bit so we can see this better. Let's actually jump to our CSS example. So all I do, I set my container to flex wrap and set that to wrap again. And it's now going to break my design to a new line. If you're wondering about the extra space, that's because my container has a set height. If I take that out, then the container adjusts to whatever size the content has. And you can see as I resize, this reshuffles nicely. The important part to understand with flex wrap is that it does not care about the general layout. It cares about the individual items and places them in the next row as they come. Because Flexbox is a so-called one dimensional layout method. How does that work in Figma? Super easy. Next to direction, you see that little arrow to wrap. Click on that and you now get a nice little Flexbox wrap. So far, we only looked at the container establishing the overall layout rules, known as the container properties. Think of the container properties like the family rules, our lovely parent, the Flexbox container, sets equal for all its children. But the children, the Flex items, are lively kids that want a bit of freedom within the constraints the parent set. And the Flex items properties give them the freedom to define how each item will adapt to the available space. We could set a fixed size, 
a percentage size of the available space in the container, or we can use something called flex, and also said max or min width. Now, this one we really need to see in CSS to understand it. So per default, our width is the content plus any padding that I've set. So I set equal padding on all of my items in the item class that I've hidden up here in the styling. And I also set a height and a height on the container. If I take that out, you can see that this is now the same. It's the height plus the padding. But let's switch that back on for this example. But let's find out how we can set up individual flex properties. So you can see I set up a class called item. This is where I set the same for everything, like the padding. And then I have individual ones, so blue, red, and orange. So I'm going to set my blue one to a fixed width of 300 pixels. And I'm going to set red to a percentage width of 30 and orange to something called flex. It's a unitless value that's going to use up the rest of the available space. If I would set all of my items to flex 1, then the width would be the available space divided by 3. If I however set one of the items to flex 2, then it will take up twice as much of the available space. But note how they still follow any change in container properties in general positioning. There are more advanced flex item properties, like changing the order or align self, which allows an item to be individually aligned overriding the container alignments. We have something similar in Figma, and for this to work, it's important that the items themselves are also set up as auto layout. So just like in Flexbox, this has nothing to do with the container properties, so we're not concerned with the auto layout menu itself. We find the settings up here right below the width and the height, and the options we have is Hug Content, Fixed and Fill Container. Hug is the same as the Flexbox default, so it's any content you have in your item plus any padding. And this is the padding from your auto layout of your item, not your parent container. Fix would just be any fixed size. So if we select this, then we can add any size up here as we did in our example with Flexbox. We do not have a percentage width. Everything in Figma, if we jump to depth mode, will always be translated into pixels. The only option we have is that we could change it to RAM. The last option we have is fill container, and that will be equal to flex. In depth mode, we see flex one, but we don't have the option to set the flex amount, so we're always stuck with flex one. So we could select all elements and now set all of them to fill container, and then this is the same as in our example before. And by the way, if we want all the text in the center, then we would need to use the auto layout menu in this case. But if we wanted, for example, this one to have more of the available space and we would pull it to make it larger, then you can see it jumps back to fixed. So this is one limitation where auto layout and Flexbox currently do not align. Another limitation is that we cannot set items to self-align. We could take them out of the flow by setting them to absolute, but this is not the same as self-align. However, another similarity with Flexbox is that we independently set up our items, but with the container properties, we can still align them. So it's very important to distinguish between selecting the parent auto layout frame and the item auto layout frame when we work in Figma. However, the real superpower of Flexbox as well as auto layout lies in nesting. So this card here is an easy one. One direction equal spacing. We turn it into Flexbox design, tell the children how to behave, and that's it easy. But remember our navigation, which we set up with space between. So this rule applies to all children, and it means that we have an equal amount of space between each of the flex items or direct children. So let's say we want to add a button. If we add this to the same hierarchy level, then Flexbox distributes the space now equally between three children. Remember, same love for all children. But the result is not what we're after. So what we need to do is to nest the button. And I'll add some more stuff in there, like my actual links. And what happens now is that those are no longer direct children of the Flex container. They're grandchildren, so they're not the business of the Navbar container anymore. They now get their rules from their parent, which is the navigation. And this could go on further if needed, like the links could be a list and their own little flex box and the button as well. And all of my nested flex boxes would follow rules of their parent, 
and live in harmony with their siblings, yet apply own rules to their direct children. So Flexbox can be a great way to control the layout of our components. But what about our overall page layout? Let's take our simple Flexbox card as an example. And yes, we could package several cards with yet another Flexbox container and set it to wrap. And we could theoretically set up our entire design like this. The great thing is that in a lot of cases, it resizes really well by itself. And a lot of the time, we don't even need additional breakpoints. So we can build something like this in Figma pretty close to the real thing. It's just about having a lot of nested auto layout with the different behavior in mind. And if we share this with development in dev mode, then they get a pretty accurate idea of what we're after. However, it's important to remember that Flexbox is a one dimensional design approach, placing each item in a line one by one, as we've learned. That is absolutely fine in most cases, but it's not going to give you the control of a grid layout with rows and columns. So if you're looking for a grid-like control of your design, as well as creating things like overlaps, you would need a two-dimensional layout approach, like CSS Grid. But it's not about one or the other. There is no right solution. They're both part of the CSS system. So you could still have your components set up as Flexbox and just place them into a CSS Grid. You could mix and match. Sometimes both work. Sometimes one is the better solution. You might even find that components are set up in CSS Grid or Flexbox. There's no right or wrong. They live in great harmony. The decision on how this is implemented in CSS is and should not be made by the designers anyway. So it's not about providing a code solution in design at all. But if we design with an understanding of the capabilities and limitations of CSS, then we can have a much better and more understanding collaboration and most important conversation with development. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. There is more coming. And make sure that you visit me on moonlearning.io where you find the full videos on Flexbox, CSS Grid, Container Queries, Media Queries and how to implement all of this in Figma.